Hello and welcome to By His Grace Network. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos. I don't want you to miss any of the videos which I'll be posting. So please subscribe. Now today we want to look at the end times events which are happening in the Christian world. So that we prepare for the crisis which is before us and also to prepare for Christ who is about to come. Did you know that there is an agenda going on to unite all religious groups into one? I mean all religions into one group. Now the question is, whose agenda is it to unite all religions? The religions of the world. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you information which shows us, which is going to show us that indeed there is an agenda to unite all religions into one religion. Let's read first from Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. It tells us that we are able to read the signs of the weather. We are able to tell the weather of that day by looking at the sky. But it's very much saddening to say that we cannot read the signs of the times, the signs which are in the Christian world, which shows that indeed there is something happening and the coming of Christ is at hand. Right, I'm going to show you a quotation from Last Day Events, page 125. It, it reads, the Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue. And many who unite in the movement do, do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is treading. They are working in darkness. Indeed, there is something going on. There is a movement which is going on right now. Now I'm going to show you this man, a picture of this man. I don't know if you know this man, but I'm going to tell you more about this man. Now the man you see is a cardinal. He's called Cardinal Peter Taxon. He's a high-ranking officer or leader at the Vatican City. He's like a spokesperson of Pope Francis because he always speak on his behalf. Now, Cardinal Taxon says in a live stream which they had on the 16th of May 2020, he said that Pope Francis sent them to prepare the future, not to prepare for the future. Now, what does it mean to prepare the future? It is different from preparing something and preparing for something. Now, during this live stream virtual meeting which Cardinal had with other people, he said Pope Francis sent them to form a group or a task force. And this was to address two issues. Number one, humanitarian crisis which is caused by COVID-19 and also to form a new post-pandemic world order. In simple ways, this is saying new world order. If we take out post and pandemic, we'll find the word new world order. That's what the Pope wants. Look at this document from Cracks magazine. It says, Youth Interface Dialogue and Peace Dominate Pope Francis' Foreign Trips in 2019. What is Interfaith? That's one thing we have to understand. What is Interfaith? Interfaith is the same as one religion is the same as uh, bringing all the faith the different faith into one group. So the Pope has been traveling the whole world and trying to unite 
the religions of the world. That's why he has been traveling. If you are not aware, you realize that Pope Francis had been going to countries like Rwanda a few years ago where he went to apologize for the 1994 genocide which took place where Christians were killed and the Catholic Church is to be blamed for the killings which took place. So the Pope has been going to different countries to apologize for the crimes of the Catholic Church. Now look at another document from American Jesuit Review. It says, Pope Francis, I share the impatience to bring about Christian unity. What does the Pope want? Christian unity. And he says he's running out of patience in trying to unite all the religion, all the Christians in this world. This is this was 2020, 26 May, you can see. So the Pope here says that he's running out of patience. He wants all Christians of this world to unite as one. Mm. Another article which I want you to look at. It says, two months on, Papal visit to Iraq seen as a model of inter-religious dialogue. Inter-religious dialogue, I've already told you. Inter-religion is the same as interfaith or one world religion. Now look at the picture below. This is what the Pope wants, one world religion. This is what the Pope has been doing to try to unite the different religions. This from Crux Magazine, 26 May 2020. Pope says, search for Christian unity is making progress, Pope says. Did you hear that? Christian unity is making progress. No wonder you see in the picture the Pope is standing amongst uh, different religious leaders, leaders of different religions. But the question is, who is working with the Pope in trying to unite the religions, the different religions of this world? Now, one of the group is the United Nations Organization, United Nations. There is, at the UN, you will find there is a, a week which they have dedicated for to all the different faiths of this world, and it is called World Interfaith Harmony Week, where they want all the different faiths to unite and pray. You can search on the internet, go to United Nations, group and you a web page and you'll see that information another group is called comis the catholic church in the european union this is a committee of catholic bishops in europe so it is one of the groups working with the pope another group is called the european sunday alliance european Sunday Alliance. This is one of the biggest advocates of Sunday as a day of rest, working with the Pope. That's why it is called the European Sunday Alliance. It is made up of different organizations which are calling for Sunday as a day of rest for all nations. Mm. Another group is called the International Labor Organization. The International Labor Organization is one of the groups working together with the Pope to unite the different religions. Did you know that different religions of the world came together and signed an agreement on 18 September 2014 in South Korea? These religions include the following. Islam faith, Hinduism faith, the Buddhism faith, the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, Sikhism faith, the Jewish faith, the Zoroaster faith, and the Baha'i faith. Now, there are so many other religious groups which came 
to sign this agreement but they are not mentioned in the video so these religions came together and signed an agreement which is called unity of religion agreement now in this document or in this agreement which was signed they say all religions must unite under God as one all religions must unite under God as one now the question is what about the differences in doctrines the differences in faith the differences in the what they believe the belief systems do Christians worship the same God as Hindus or as Buddhists the same God as Muslims the same God as Sikhs how do they unite as one under God because they don't serve the same God let's read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 3 which says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child and they shall not escape this unit of religion they say it's for peace and safety of the world the different religions of the world should unite for peace but the bible tells us when they shall say peace then destruction shall come upon them now another verse which i want us to read is from daniel chapter 8 verse 25 which says and through his policy this is this verse is speaking about the little horn through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his in his heart and by peace did you take note of that by peace shall destroy many by peace shall destroy many the little horn power which is the papacy the papacy will magnify himself indeed the purpose is magnifying himself and through the peace he shall destroy many people now look at this document this is the document which they signed in 2014 you can see that that and look at the, the signature and it is titled unity of religion agreement did you know that there is a campaign going on to have one day of rest as a day of worship a day one day there's a campaign going on now look at this article from the Vatican News Vatican News it says EU bishops call for nations to protect work free Sunday did you get that one to protect not a nation but nations of the world to protect work free Sunday so the bishops are calling for work free Sunday how do you protect Sunday unless you put it you put it as you make it a law you make it a law now these are the bishops of Europe which are calling for a work free Sunday now there is another organization which is called the Green Sabbath project now the Green Sabbath project is saying we need a universal day of rest. Mm. This was on the 4th of June 2020. A day of rest, universal day, meaning the whole world should have a day of rest. Which day is this are they calling for? Now another one, this is from uh, International Youth Christian Workers. And this person is saying, workers are not machines, but persons that can be better contribute to the common good when they have a right to a shared day of rest. A shared day of rest. They want a day of rest for the entire world. The question is, which day? Which day? Because these people are not speaking only as politicians but they are speaking as Christians so they want a day of rest and which day is this 
Now look at this man. This is a man from the German Catholic Workers Movement. He says, we have to reintegrate Sunday into EU Working Time Directive. What is that? To, inter to reintegrate something means you are putting something which you are putting back something which was there already. So he is calling for reintegration of Sunday in the laws of the European countries. Mm. Another man. This man is from German Catholic Workers Movement. He says, we need to assess the value of Sunday from a holistic point of view and understand its full contribution to our society. Hmm. Does Sunday has any value to our society? What is he saying? He's saying Sunday should be made into a law for all people. Now this man is, is also a member of the Bavarian parliament from ba ba Bavaria, Tobias Gebhardt. He says, Sunday is the day reserved to families, faith. Families and faith? What does that mean? What is faith? Faith, you can already see. He's, tell, he's saying that Sunday is a day of rest for the families. Families should worship on Sunday. Families should come together on Sunday. Look, this is a very important person in Bavaria, a member of parliament campaigning for Sunday as a day of rest. Now, this man is a bishop. is a bishop in the Catholic Church. And he says, Sunday rem reminds us that human life is more than production and consumption. It is time for spiritual family life. Mm. Sunday is a day of spiritual family life. This is what the bishop is saying, that Sunday, on Sunday, people should not work. On Sunday, the family should come together and study the word of God, worship God, and grow spiritually. But what does the Bible say? Is Sunday the Sabbath? Never. Scripture is very clear. It says, Sunday, Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. And the seventh day of the week is Saturday instead of Sunday. This man is Luigi Morgano. He is a member of the European Parliament. Hmm. European Parliament. He says Sunday characterizes the values, the culture, the roots of our Western and European society. Hmm. Sunday is a, it's, a val, it's a valuable day. It is part of their culture in Europe. Mm. And he says, recalling his commitment for work-free Sunday. He's calling for work-free Sunday. Sunday should not be a day to work, but a day for families, a day for worship. That's what he is saying. There's another a woman from Europe, a very important person. He is, this lady is from the Protestant church, church in Germany. And she says, people need work-free Sunday to rest, spend time with family and friends, hmm. to worship together or just to relax. Take note, is, she's saying Sunday is a day of rest to spend time with families, spend time to worship together. This is a campaign. This is a protestant, a so-called protestant leader from Brussels who says Sunday should be a day of rest. I hope you can see that there is a serious campaign going on. Another one, another leader. Let's preserve Sunday as a day dedicated to the family and human encounter and celebration. It is the same message. Same message repeating itself. This is how people campaign. When you are campaigning for something, you always repeat the message. You always repeat the message. So these people are campaigning for Sunday to be made a day 
of rest. Now this woman is Dr. Julia, is a member of a Protestant church. Say Sunday gives me time to spend time with my friends and my family. Protestants. Protestant churches are they not supposed to protest from false doctrines which have been taught by some churches, the Catholic Church to be specific? Are they not supposed to protest? Why are they calling themselves Protestants if they are not protesting the wrong teachings of the Catholic, Catholic Church? I want to go back to the Unity of Religion Agreement which was signed in November and September. 2014. Now, there was a message from Pope Francis to all the leaders who were there present during the ceremony. And Pope Francis calls for unity. He says, according to him, that the differences which we have, the differences in doctrine, should not separate us from becoming one. And division, according to Pope Francis, is caused by the devil. So the question which we should ask Pope Francis is, should we unite though we have differences in doctrines? Should we compromise the doctrines, the Bible doctrines in which we believe just to come together for the sake of peace? Mm. You listen to Pope as he speaks for himself. La unidad que está germinando en nosotros. La, la unidad que comienza sellada por un solo bautismo, el que todos tenemos. La unidad que vamos buscando juntos en el camino. Coming back to the campaign which is going on. There is a campaign going on which is called, they call it, EU hash EU for free Sunday. That's the campaign going on. Now look at some quotations from a document called Shaping the Future of Work by Comis. Comis is a committee of European Catholic bishops. Now this is the document. You can search, go to their webpage and you will see. This document was written in October 2018. That's when it was produced by this committee. Now, in this document they say it is based on Catholic social teachings, not upon God, not upon the Bible. Now, they are a source of inspiration according to the document. Look at the bottom of the document, the paragraph. They say Pope Francis. They quote Pope Francis. They quote what he said in his book, the Laudato Si, the letter. And they say that Sunday, which is recognized by tradition and custom as a weekly day of rest in EU member states, should be protected by the European document, by the Euro European law. Mm. They also say that Sunday should be a synchronized day of rest in the European law. Mm. It's a day which allows families to spend time together. Is Sunday a day of rest? In the same document they say, reintegrate Sunday protection into EU law. To reintegrate means to put it back. Sunday law was, a, was, was there in the European countries, in their laws, but then it ended 1996. In this document, Pope Francis also says they want to make Sunday as a day of rest. Now look at this picture. It says, Climate Sunday. Climate Sunday. Do you see the puzzle? The pieces of the puzzle coming together? Climate Sunday worship. They say, they are calling that all churches every Sunday they should have a sermon in which they preach about the climate before they go to the scriptures. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters, don't be surprised, don't be confused. There is 
a very big link between the climate movement and the Sunday movement. Actually, this is one group, one group campaigning. They are the people who are campaigning for Sunday worship as a day of worship, a day of rest, are the very people who are campaigning for for sun uh, for climate protection to protect the climate of this world. Do not be surprised. You must see the pieces of the puzzle coming together. Look at another article from the tablet. This is 11 June 2021. It says, as G7 begins, the world needs climate Sundays and world Christians more than ever. The world needs what? Climate Sundays. These are G7 leaders. These are powerful leaders of Europe. This happened on the 7th, the 11th of June 2021. They are calling for a climate Sunday. Look at this. This is a group which is called the Rocha. In you, it is in found in in the in the UK. They joined together with nearly 30 other charities denominations and Christian aid and the Church of England and the Church of Scotland and the Church of Wales to run the Climate Sunday campaign. There is a Climate Sunday campaign which they are running in the UK, Scotland and the churches have come together to run a campaign for Climate Sunday. <clears throat> Do you hear that? Do you see that? There's something serious going on. There's a serious campaign going on. There's a serious campaign going on and we as Christians should see these signs of the time. Now the same group, the Rocha, they are saying that churches should now be encouraged to a practical commitment by signing the common time is now. They are saying now is the time for all churches to commit, to do some practical things and sign the agreement to protect Sunday, to promote Sunday. And the time to do that is now. This is from the tablet magazine, I've told you, the 11th of June 2021. You can see there are things happening. There is a serious campaign indeed happening. But the day which they are campaigning for is not the day which the Bible says we should rest. The day on which we should worship God. Dear Christians, dear viewers, do you know where this unity is leading the world to? Do you know where this unity is leading the world to? The unity of all religions. Mm. I'm going to tell you where it is leading us to. Now, Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 tells us that it says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. There will be some killing which will happen. Because of the issue of worship, true worship and false worship. So those who will refuse to worship the, according to the false worship will be killed according to Revelation chapter 13, verse number 15. Another verse which I want us to read is from Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, which says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that has the mark. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, the issue of buying and not buying, not selling, will be an issue about worship. The issue of the mark of the beast is an issue about worship. It's not about the cheap, which many people think it will be. Now, did you know that the final conflict in this Christian world will take place very soon? The Sabbath question is going to be the issue in the great final conflict. 
in which all the world will act, will take part. The issue, the final issue, it will be on the Sabbath, the true Sabbath of God and the fourth Sabbath of man, the Sabbath of the devil. That will be the issue. Now the Sabbath is the issue in the final conflict. The Sabbath is the great test question. A great te test question. It is the line of demarcation between the loyal and the true and the disloyal and transgressors. Mm. Yes, the Sabbath, the line of demarcation will be and is going to be the line of demarcation very soon in this world and everyone will take part in this issue. So wait and see. Those who will honor the, the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of the law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. Mm, you hear that? Do you hear that? When we see the corruptions, when we see the calamities happening in the world, somebody will be blamed for that very, very soon. Very soon, the people who keep the true Bible Sabbath will be blamed, will be, the, be called enemies of the society, enemies of the world, the disloyal people of the world. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. That is, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying the reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor. In simple words, when calamities like the, the wars, the diseases like the COVID-19 and other diseases which are to come, when they will intensify in this world, when all the problems of climate change will intensify, the people who keep the true Sabbath will be said to be the ones offending God by not keeping Sunday holy. Did you hear that? That all the problems which will be faced in the world will be a result of those who stick to the Sabbath of the Bible and disobey or are disloyal to Sunday Sabbath. And these people will be blamed for all the calamities, all the problems of this world. Mm. This is where it is leading us, brothers and sisters. This is where it is leading us, dear viewers. And you must take note. You must know. You must study your Bible and see what is going on. And you indeed you will see that time is at hand when things are going to happen. Bigger things. Let's look at Revelation chapter 14 verse 7. It says, saying with a loud voice, this is an angel which John saw, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. There is only one God who should be worshipped, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the fountains of waters and the seas. Now this same God has a day which he says we should worship him. In the Bible, we read in Exodus chapter 20 from verse 8, it says, Remember the Sabbath day. In, in, in Genesis chapter 2, we read that the, Sabbath, the, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. It is not Sunday, but it is Saturday, which is the Sabbath. That is Revelation chapter 17, 14 verse 7. Another scripture which I wanted to read, another thing I want to read to you, brothers and sisters, as we near the end of this short presentation. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. 
here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Yes, the people of God, the saints of God, are known by keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus Christ. The commandments of God includes the true Sabbath, commandment of the Sabbath, the, the fourth commandment of the Bible, which, is say, which says, remember the Sabbath. So Revelation tells us that the people of God will be known by keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus. No wonder the devil hates them. No wonder the devil hates them because he knows Christ said, if you keep my commandments, you will, be, you will abide in my love. Mm. Mm. So in the last days in which we live, brothers and sisters, for us who will keep the truth Sabbath, for us who will keep the commandments of God, we will need patience because difficult times are before us. Challenging times, trying times are before us. Now, there is a need which has been promoted for unity. Is this the unity in which we want? Is this the unity that we need? Of course we need unity as Christians, but we do not need unity which will compromise the Bible doctrines, the Bible teachings. We don't need that unity where we have to do away with the Bible and follow what men say. Never. That is not being a Christian. A Christian is a person who is Christ-like, who follows the footsteps of Christ. We live in a very critical hours of the earth history, dear brothers and sisters. We live in a very, very special time. Times when we have to open our eyes and see what is happening. These are times when we have to study the Bible. These are the times we need to go on our knees and pray God to lead us or else we'll be caught unaware. We'll be caught unaware by the things which are happening. Indeed, brothers and sisters, Christ is coming. He says in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, the end, the end of all things is it at hand. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Be sober and watch. God knows that time is near. For Christ said, when you shall see all these things, then you must know that your salvation draweth nigh, and Christ is even at the doors. I hope you have learned something from this video. May God bless you for watching. Amen.